Hey everyone, and welcome to this video documenting the process that I went through to convert my walk-in closet into a full-on recording booth. Now, I'm actually recording this mostly as a documentary for my friend who requested that I document the process. I don't think she was quite expecting this, but this was the best way that I could convey everything I did with as much detail as possible. And I'm sure you guys can see from the time index at the bottom, this is going to be a long video. But what you're gonna see here is the entire process that I went through, everything from planning it out to the final build and even hearing a, co a comparison in audio quality both before everything was installed and after so you can hear the sound difference and notice the benefits behind having a sound treated room. Now, because this video is so long, I wanted to make sure that if you're only here to look for something specific, that you can easily find the information that you're looking for. So I'm gonna have everything indexed out by time days and also descriptions of what each day is going to entail so that if there is something specific you're looking for that should hopefully help you to that end if there is something specific you're looking for and maybe you don't see it in the description and you don't have time to go through the whole video feel free to send me a message hopefully i'll see it youtube is kind of finicky with that stuff nowadays but if i do i will be more than happy to help you guys out with whatever i can provide keep in mind i am a professional voice actor i'm not a uh, professionally trained audio engineer. Everything that I've done here and everything that I've done in the past leading up to this point has largely been self-taught and utilized tutorials and information online. The same information you guys can get, but now you'll see it here from my point of view all laid out in front of you. But having said that, let's get into the video and thank you guys very much for coming and watching. Hey guys, welcome to the video of how I'm going to convert this walk-in closet into a full and professionally treated recording space for myself. Now this was something I planned on doing for a while and one of my friends was planning on doing the same thing. So she did ask me to document my process so that that way she could see what it was I did. Now I'm gonna apologize in advance because these pieces were sometimes recorded out of order. So things might've been repeated. Uh, but I'm going to do my best to make it as comprehensive as possible without making it be annoying. So the first thing was to clear out everything from this closet so that that way I could see exactly what I had to work with. The stuff on the shelf isn't relevant. I'm going to play around with that stuff later. But right now, at least I know the area I have and what I can do with it. So let's get into that part. Okay, so essentially what I've gone ahead and done is to clear out everything, at least in the immediate area where I would be standing while recording. There's still stuff up on the shelves and that's okay. I'm not really worried about that. So what I wanted to do was try to get a baseline feel of what this is going to sound like just fresh off the bat. It's obviously not the, the quality that I'm using for the actual microphone. Um, and it is hot in this room. There is no ventilation in here whatsoever, but this at least gives you a rough idea of how everything is going to sound before treatment, before I go ahead and do everything. And I think I have a pretty nifty workaround for how exactly I'm gonna have this all laid out. So as promised, here's the closet with all the equipment back in. I have everything laid out for the most part the way I want it, but I'll be tweaking a couple things here and there as I bring more materials into the booth itself. What's being stored up top on the shelves isn't really a priority for me to take care of. I can always remove them later, but now that I have everything in here, the real work can begin. Okay, so I've made a good amount of headway actually. Um, what I did, there used to be a shelf that would actually be at the top of that board right there that went straight across. But I mean, I'm six foot one and standing on the floor, I can only reach up to there with, you know, a moderate amount of effort. So what I did is I took that board and I repurposed it to make it into a desk shelf for myself. Uh, I have my microphone hooked up on the end that's gonna sit there. So as I either stand in place where the stool roughly will be, or I have an actual sitting stool, uh, I got that a while ago, but never ended up using it. So whether I sit or stand for my recording, if I sit, I pull this out. If I stand, it gets tucked away in the corner and I have plenty of room there in the middle. Uh, but what I've also done in preparation for sound treatment is I've repurposed a whole bunch of the PVC pipe that I had when I built my first two frames. I also had to get a little creative because obviously when I cut these, I cut these to fit for the purposes I was looking for. Um, I obviously did not build this closet, nor did I cut the PVC pipe for this closet either, which you can see 
there's a good five or six inch gap in between there. Nothing that I can't fill in with foam, which is right there. Old foam that I was using to sound treat the room in the first uh, booth slash room I was set up in in the apartment. I even put a little extra piece on there so I have a place to hang my headset. I was originally going to hang it off of the pole, but I figured why not just make a little extension? I have all kinds of extra PVC because this was originally being used, originally it was a six by six foot uh, room, like a small box. Then I sized that down to three by five using the exact same pieces of PVC, just cutting some smaller pieces. But my plan is to have this whole PVC frame wrapped up in the moving blankets I had before. Um, and then the gaps here along the side and also everything here, the sidewall, the backsplash, uh, and the side of the wall here that the PVC isn't covering, uh, will all be utilizing those foam panels right there. So the only thing is my cords. They're not quite long enough to reach my computer. Literally for some of them, it's a matter of feet. Originally what I was gonna do was drill through this wall over here because on the other side of my 3D printer is the outlet. I did do a little test run, which is why the cord is sitting right there. And I thought at first the carpet was too high pile uh, for the cords to actually be able to fit under there without frame. Turns out that's not the case. What I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna get some longer uh, cords and cables for everything that I have in there. It shouldn't be too much. A um, Couple of USBs, one HDMI cable. I have one, two, three USBs. I have the keyboard, the mouse, and the uh, Scarlet interface. So I gotta get longer cables to accommodate all of those. And I also have to get a longer HDMI cable for the monitor itself. The only thing is now I have to figure out a way to get it to go under the door. Like I said, the carpet is pretty high pile, but it actually is able to fit under the door. It does scrape a little bit still, so I'm gonna need to get some protection for it, like a transition strip of some kind. But that'll be a lot less work than trying to drill through the walls. That's my next step. Before I do any sound treatment in there, I gotta get the thing powered and ready to go, ready to record and ready to test. I don't wanna bother setting up all the sound treatment if it's, this isn't going to work. So, Amazon is my next stop, and I gotta get the cords, cables, and the door protector, the transition strip that I need to make it happen. Should also get some more command strips as well so that I can hang up all those pieces of foam. I should have enough to cover everything I'm looking to do, and I have a trick in mind to create a false ceiling so I won't have to sound treat anything above my head and I wouldn't have to sound treat the ceiling itself. So the great thing about this is that I was able to do it with minimal modification to the closet itself. Uh, for example, I already talked about the shelf up top becoming my working desk down here. But what I also did in preparation of making a fake uh, roof for myself underneath the ceiling was I did have to detach this shelf from its framework. Now, it's still being supported. It, it is still uh, where it needs to be. Everything is drilled in. These were nailed in on the ends. Uh, it doesn't need to be. This is solidly in place. But by moving it out a little bit, I created a gap that was big enough for this one piece of PVC pipe to go through. The reason being is because of this pole here. My plan, because this comes off freely, is to have this be able to be floated loosely so that when I'm not recording, when I want to access to the closet and have like the, the lighting and everything, I can take this off and bring it over here. So the door will have to be closed, but I should be able to, let me see if I can grab this, bring it over here and have it sitting on top resting. Now, the idea that I have is that while this portion of the frame is going to be wrapped up in those moving blankets, this pole will have another moving blanket attached to it. So whenever I want to record, I just grab this pole, transition it up and over, and then all I'll have to do is just bring it over, drop it in place, and then from here, back all the way to the PVC frame, I should have a nice 
ceiling, a makeshift roof, a makeshift ceiling over my head. I won't know if that will work though until I do the initial test and after I have everything up and running. So step one, get the booth powered and running up, running completely. Uh, step two will be to sound treat what I believe is going to work with my little quick fix for the roof. And then if that doesn't work, the optional step three will be to figure out how to sound treat the ceiling and roof itself. So you'll have to excuse the four by three aspect ratio, but I've been working on the booth now for about two hours. That includes cleaning everything out, putting the voice recording stuff in, and building the PVC frame in addition to just adjusting those two shelves. Two hours worth of work, not bad. I've also cleaned up everything that I took out and put it in storage somewhere else. But I'm exhausted. My back is killing me. I have a headache. I'm dizzy. I'm tired. Um, being a COVID long hauler sucks. I I'm going to be so happy when this is done, but I've got to wait now for everything from Amazon to show up. Uh, which I still haven't even ordered. I still got to make up the list of everything and hope to God that I'm I'm picking the right things. I got to do this all in steps. This was never going to be done in one day. I knew that, um, and it was ne it wouldn't have been done in one day even when I was feeling completely up to snuff. I foresee this taking me probably another week. Whenever everything else shows up, I'm just going to start. I'm going to continue to plug away. I'll document as I go along and I'll keep everything up to date. All right, so here we are at the beginning of day two. It's actually pretty early in the morning, uh, just a little after nine o'clock. Amazon came through like they always do. Uh, most of the cables actually showed up yesterday. Uh, same day delivery, any purchase over $35. So that's awesome. Uh, cable management is not a priority at the moment. I'm just trying to make sure that everything is powered and working properly, which it is. Uh, everything from the interface, the mouse, the keyboard, the monitor, it is all there. And the way I have it set up, I'm actually utilizing this HDMI splitter. So what you see on my main computer here, where everything will be directly recorded, I have my D&D world map pulled up on the right screen. Uh, but essentially, whatever is displayed on the left screen, which you can see Adobe Audition there, uh, is what is also displayed on the monitor inside of the booth. So for example, you can kind of see the little window there uh, that's asking about changing the hardware settings, which yes, I want to do. You can actually see it changing in the background as well. So now that I have my focus right set up again, I've got to have that active. So now Audition is set up to record directly from the microphone inside of the recording booth. Now let's get in there. Let's do a quick test run so we can hear how it sounds. And once again, do not judge me for my lack of cable management, I will get there. In examining a work such as Peter Rabbit, it is important that the superficial characteristics of its deceptively simple plot should not be allowed to blind the reader to the more substantial fabric of its deeper motivations. In this report, I plan to discuss the sociological implications of family pressures so great as to drive an otherwise moral rabbit to perform acts of thievery which he consciously knew were against the law. So halfway through day two, I did have to take a little bit of a break to go to an appointment, uh, hence the band-aid that you can see on the back of my arm there. But now that I'm back for the second half of the day, my goal is to get everything wrapped in the blankets as much as possible. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to do the best that I can to actually have these blankets double layered by having more protection between my voice and the wall itself, that's what's really gonna help to cut down on that reverb and make the sound as crisp and clean as possible. So I'm beginning by wrapping the blanket on the back side of the frame itself and then bringing it around to the front using metal tension clamps to hold everything in place. It's not gonna be the prettiest, it's not gonna be the most professional looking, but as long as it gives me the professional sound that I'm looking for, that's really all that matters. I'm not huge into aesthetics. It's more so about function for me. But while I was getting this all set up, I decided to get a little creative with the materials I already had, so that that way I wouldn't have to worry about buying extra materials later on. So under the desk, I actually have a smaller frame that comes all the way out. Essentially what I'm gonna be doing with this frame, assuming everything works out the way that I want it to, is that this frame will be wrapped in the moving blankets as well. That's actually gonna save me a lot as far as trying to hook up all of the acoustic foam panels. As I might've mentioned before, I only have about two dozen or so panels. Most of that's gonna be reserved for the backsplash behind the monitor 
and what other areas I have that the blankets themselves can't cover. So I don't believe that would be enough if I didn't cover underneath the desk with the moving blankets as well. And even with the moving blankets in place, I may still have to end up ordering some more. It all depends on how far I can get. I'm not 100% happy with the frame under the desk though, and the reason for that is because the frame, like before, it was not cut to size specifically for this project. If it was like a quarter of an inch shorter, it would actually be ideal because right now it's actually lifting the desk up a little bit. I want to get these blankets up first. I'll do that section afterwards. Uh, once I figure out that part, then I'll start doing the panels all around. Okay, so unfortunately I did have to remove the desk and pretty much everything on top of it as well. That wasn't too big of a deal, but like I kind of mentioned before, the frame for underneath the desk was a last minute uh, decision. Uh, I've already got a good amount of the blankets up. I want to see if I can get some more. Like this one right here is actually double layered. I'd like to try to get that as consistent as possible. I'm not sure how feasible it's going to be. Uh, but I'm still going to try. We'll see how it goes. But basically, I'm going to double wrap one blanket here on this half. And then I'll double wrap another one here. And then I can go back and continue to work on getting these guys double layered. And then the last bit, we'll be getting that pole up to make my false ceiling. Much better. This one, the way it's actually folded right now, they're one blanket on the left and one on the right, as I mentioned before. But they're doubled over twice. So if anything in this booth is going to be sound, uh, sound treated, it's definitely going to be under the desk. I shouldn't have to worry about that. But the nice part is that because this is split in the middle there, if I have to do any cable management, that will be my easy access. Let's get the desk back in here and see how it looks. So all in all, not bad. Uh, taking everything out and putting it back in was pretty easy for the most part. Uh, one thing that I do like is that it seems that the desk has become a little bit more stable. It's still got a good amount of wiggle, but with it actually being on top of the moving blankets and actually on top of the brackets as well, those, those clamps that I have there, um, it actually seems to have gained a fair amount of stability. So these blankets are done underneath. The desk is done for the most part. Not 100% sure how I'm going to do this part still about getting them doubled up. Well, the simplest solutions are often the best. All I had to do was just hang a second blanket right on the front. It doesn't have to be on the back side. And I don't even know if it has to be double layered, to be honest with you, but I am going for the best sound quality possible. I don't want any reverb in this room. So I was trying to get everything double layered. It now is, it's double layered all the way around. So now that we have that, it's time. Ooh, do I want to do the foam or do I want to do the ceiling first? I really want to see if this ceiling works, because if it doesn't, I need to rethink my plan. So priority, now that all this is done, ceiling first, backsplash afterwards. All right, so just as a quick proof of concept, this is fully mounted in the holders that I had before for the wooden dowel. Uh, you can actually see it there sticking out a little bit. I wanted to make sure that there was enough of a gap that this would be able to go into the frame uh, the same had to happen for the hook here in the middle and also the end piece over there. So now I'm going to be pulling up the end here, bringing it over to the other side there and clamping it down. It's coming together and if I do this last part correctly, the ceiling should work exactly as intended. You know, all things considered, not bad. It doesn't hit my head. It's a little wavy, so it's misshapen. It's not solid, which kind of helps. Uh, with the reflection of the sound, which means it won't bounce directly off. It'll be dispersed a little bit better. And there's just enough light peeking through. This is not bad. This should work. I got to tighten it up a little bit, make sure it's uh, clamped down properly so that that way when I go to stretch it, everything will sit the way it's supposed to be. But yeah, I'm, uh, I'm happy with this. Let me show you what it looks like from the outside, just so you can kind of get an idea of what it actually is doing. So you need to kind of ignore the door a little bit because the door is going to be closed, obviously, anytime I record. But this gives you the rough idea of what exactly is happening here. So all that's going to happen is that's basically just going to be like a pull out, uh, like retractable awning that you would see outside on a porch or something like that. But it's just something that I'll have to do by hand each time I get ready to record. If I close the door with that up, 
that's going to be in the way. And then when I go to open the door, I might not be able to because that's going to sit in front of it. So yeah, every time I stop recording, I'm going to have to take that down so I can actually get into the booth. As I mentioned before, this is how it looks like when it's open. It's basically just going to go toward the back of the frame and sit right on top and it's going to drape down until it's time for me to lift it up and over and give myself the ceiling that I need. So you can see these clamps here. These are actually the ones that are attached to the dowel itself. But behind it is the other uh, clamps that are holding the, the wall frame together, the wall blanket to the frame, I should say. Uh, so you see the brackets there in the back. This goes up on top of it and it just sits there until it's ready to be moved over. It's out of the way of the door. The door can open and close freely without getting in the way. And that is exactly what I needed it to do. Proof of concept achieved. Now it's just a matter of getting the foam on the black on the backsplash. Okay, so unfortunately I'm gonna have to end day two here. Um, the reason being is because I knew I was forgetting something when I ordered all the cables and everything off of Amazon. And what I forgot were the command strips to actually hang all of the acoustic foam panels. Um, it's actually kind of a mixed blessing too, or a blessing in disguise, I guess you could say, because I also, Finally, now that I have all the blankets up and everything, I took the time to take a look at how many panels I actually need, roughly just based off of square footage alone. I took another head count. I only have 24 panels. I knew it was 24 or 26. I had mentioned that before. But it turns out that I have about 44 to 45 square feet worth of wall space that I need to have covered. The other thing too is that for the cable management beneath the door, I've been looking at transition strips. Most of them are hard plastic. Most of them are probably about a good half inch tall. And with the rug being as high pile as it is, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to make that happen going under the door. Something else I have to work out. But for the meantime, the immediate need is command strips and a few dozen more acoustic panels. So day three was by far the longest day, but thankfully the least labor intensive physically. As I was doing research on different transition strips to get the cables underneath the door, I came across two that primarily stood out. Plastic ones that are usually a little bit thicker, which would have been a little too thick, I believe, to go under the door, and fabric ones that, while they would have kept the cables all together, really wouldn't have kept them as flat as I needed them to be to be able to fit underneath without being damaged every time the door opens and closes. So while I was researching the fabric ones, I thought to myself, well, I have my 3D printer, maybe I could create little clamps to hold all the cables in place and then wrap them in fabric. But I would still need to buy those fabric covers and hope that they would actually do what it is I needed them to do without being able to see them in advance. So as my mind went to the idea of making things on the 3D printer, I decided why not make my own transition strip instead? So that's exactly what I set out to do. I began by taking measurements of the door frame itself using a caliper to make sure it was as accurate as possible. So once I had all those measurements written down, I went ahead and I modeled a mock-up of the door frame in Blender so that, that way I actually had something that I could work around to make sure that my print had a little buffer around it in case my measurements might have been a little off. I wanted to have some variance to it so that if I needed to shift it or if it needed to have a little bit of flexibility behind it as far as measurements go, this is what was going to be able to take care of it for me by basically modeling around the mock-up but giving a little bit of a gap in between. So when I designed it, I made it not only so that it would fit right up against the contours of the door frame itself, but that it would also wrap around the frame of the door and have small brackets or pins on the ends that would actually loop around it and hold it in place so that that way it would never come away from the door. I also wanted to have a little bit of extra control over how this is going to work while I'm inside the booth trying to close the door. So I did extend out a small portion of it that would be on the inside of the booth as a little pedal for me to step on to make sure that if the door can't clear it, that I can give it a little bit of extra push into the carpet and everything will go right under and cause as little damage as possible and ideally no damage at all. What actually took the most amount of time was the printing itself. 
It took about four hours for this transition strip to be printed out, and I did have a little bit of an issue with the left side uh, in the video that you see here coming away from the build plate itself. So I do have some issues with adhesion. I'm not necessarily concerned about the curling that I see down there at the bottom because this is going to be going on top of a carpet. Uh, I don't have to worry about it sitting perfectly balanced or having to worry about it being flat on a flat surface. So I'm actually okay with this, but clearly I do have some issues with bed adhesion. There are a couple things that I could do to fix this problem, which I'm going to have to do for myself in general, but for the sake of this project, this is really all I needed it to do. So I'm actually really happy because this print worked out just as good as I could have hoped. Um, I definitely did notice a couple of flaws in the design, which is okay. I really did this off the cuff. Um, wasn't planned that far ahead. I actually did have to make a slight modification to it. Uh, I didn't realize that even though I did put a buffer in there so that this would be able to fit around the door frame, um, I didn't give it enough when it came to the hooks on the back. Um, these little parts here that are actually going to loop around and hold this in place when it's on the door frame itself. So the problem was that all of this here in the middle could get in there no problem. Um, what the problem actually turned out to be were these little tabs here that were going to loop behind the door frame itself to hold this in place. And so all I really had to do was just to clip off this one little bit of the plastic. Uh, came off right there on the end on the more solid piece. The reason why I did it on this one was because it's much easier to start with this being up against the frame like that and then to have this one on the outside loop around and actually connect and tuck itself behind the frame on the outside. So as you can probably tell, because I did mention that I had to clip off this part of the clip, I have tested this on the door frame and it does fit. It's nice and snug, it doesn't move or go anywhere. If there's one thing I wish I could have done was to make this a little bit thicker, but honestly, this is pretty pliable and still has the strength it needs. Uh, I am worried that it will break someday. I don't know when that day will be, uh, but it is a strong possibility, which is why I'm not going to futz around with it too much once I actually get it where it needs to be. This is just a simple top cover. This is going to go right on top of the cables and the cords are going to stay underneath to make sure that the door doesn't scrape them, right? But here's the thing. While the cables are sitting in this little channel here, there's really nothing to keep them in there. But what I wish I had done is where these bevels are, I wish I had made those more prominent because what I'm going to plan to do is see if I can find some long, thin zip ties. So that way, all I have to do is get the cords lined up, zip tie the stuff all around. There should be enough clearance uh, that I can still get this on the door frame and have it positioned where it needs to be. But that zip tie is what's going to keep the, the cables in this channel here and make sure that they don't pop up and get underneath the frame and then inadvertently push this up further into the door. I don't know if that's going to work. So with my first 24 all covered in command strips and ready to go, there's really nothing left to do but pick a spot and get started. So even though the acoustic panels arrived on day three while I was in the middle of modeling and 3D printing, the command strips didn't show up until today. That's actually all right by me because with these panels, when they do arrive at your house, they're actually vacuum sealed and compressed. Because of that, you're supposed to allow anywhere between 24 to 48 hours for them to fully expand to their normal size. They've now been sitting for about 36 hours and they should be ready to go. I actually started by hanging the original 24 panels as part of the backsplash. Before I started to hang them though, I actually went ahead and preloaded the command strips in each one of the corners. One thing I did have to do though was to actually put the command strips in the refrigerator. It's about 95 degrees out right now and I don't even know how hot it is with the heat index. But the problem was that when I first opened them and tried to connect them to the foam panels, they were so hot and so warm that when I tried to peel them apart, they actually began to almost melt and kind of stretch together. So by putting them in the refrigerator for about five or 10 minutes, it was enough to solidify them that they were actually able to come apart nice and easy. Now, one thing that I've seen recommended online as well is a lot of people recommend using spray adhesive either in place of the command strips or in addition to it. If you're going to do something where you're going to mount these panels to another board, like a piece of cardboard or poster board, spray adhesive will work very well, especially if you know that you're going to move and reuse that entire board. 
However, I have seen more people recommend to not use spray adhesive, and I am actually from that school of thought as well, if you're only going to be hanging these panels directly onto the wall itself. Unless you know with 100% certainty that these panels will never have to be moved, you don't want to use spray adhesive. Anytime you go to remove the panel once you have it mounted, you're going to damage your panel, the wall, or more than likely both together. So I just stick with the command strips just in case I ever have to change up the layout of these panels, or maybe even someday when I have the time, the money, and the opportunity, upgrade them to something of better quality. So far, everything is going smoothly. The only obstacle I've had to face so far was I did have to cut into one of my panels so that that way it would fit around the bracket that's holding the shelf up above me. But the other cool thing is that now this one strip is helping me to sound treat that bracket as well. So I'm covering all the hard surfaces that could potentially reflect any sound whatsoever. So all things considered, not bad, not bad at all. It looks good. I didn't have any difficulty getting any of the pieces up with the exception of this corner right there. I did have to kind of overlay them on top of each other in a goofy sort of way, but that's fine. It can act like a little base trap in the corner, but these are the 24 original panels that I had. I still have to take care of the door, the corner off to the left, and this portion down here to the right. In addition, I also want to make sure that I'm getting underneath all the shelving as well. So now it's time to put the command strips on the other foam panels and to get this completely wrapped around in all of the foam. Um, I will say, I think I can already hear a big difference just having everything up. There is a little bit of reverb left still, but not nearly as much as what was going on the first time around. So unfortunately, I've hit my first real snag when it came to actually building this booth, and that's the new foam panels that I ended up getting. I thought they felt a little different coming out of the package, and it turns out that I was right. Uh, my old foam panels have a very, like, sort of brittle kind of, like, uh, feeling to it, but the other ones that I got, they're very, very soft. And the problem is that the the stiffness or the brittleness or the porousness or whatever you want to call it for these panels that I had before, uh, the transition strip, the command strips rather, connect very nicely to these. They stay on and they're nice and tight. With this one though, they basically slough right off. Let me show you. So I already went through and I, I thankfully I only did a dozen of them. I have, I think four dozen, but literally that took no effort whatsoever. It just peels right off. So unfortunately, that's a pretty big problem. The reason being is because the panels that I'm trying to put up now are going to be hanging upside down. But even just trying to put the first panel on, it fell off almost immediately with no effort whatsoever. But now I'll have to go back into my order history because the panels that are up currently for my backsplash, I've had these ones for a long time, three or four years or so. So I need to go back into my Amazon order history and try to find this exact brand with this exact style. Um, but unfortunately, I'm gonna have to stop working now with all of this. So yeah, back to Amazon. So that's pretty darn disappointing. I really wanted to have all of this done and completely ready to go by the end of the day today. It's not as bad of a situation as it seems though. I'm actually really happy, I guess you could say, that these panels are going away. When I first touched them and I felt the material they were made out of, I instinctively didn't have a whole lot of faith in them. And then especially now with the transition, uh, with the command strips not being able to stick on them, it wouldn't have suited my needs anyway. So I did go back on Amazon and I found my old order, but wouldn't you know, currently unavailable. Well, what can you do? So I did some research and I should have done more research on the panels that I did buy because if you go down into the comments, it actually does say from a lot of people, probably a good half dozen or so, that they also had issues using command strips to keep these panels up there. So it was doomed to fail from the start. That's my fault for not doing the proper amount of research. So I really have no one to blame but myself for that one. I can't even blame the manufacturer at this point. But these were the panels that I got. The brand name didn't really mean a whole lot to me. I'm not familiar with this brand. 
and that's probably one of the first indicators but there was limited stock it had good reviews it had a strong score i was really hopeful for these acoustic panels i didn't see anything wrong but again it was my own fault for not digging any deeper so instead, after doing some additional research, I watched a couple more YouTube videos, and this time I checked all the comments. These are the panels that I've decided to settle on. But I double checked these not only in the comments, but on YouTube as well. There are a couple of different content creators on YouTube that do use these, recommend them for the sound quality that they offer, which tells me that the material is good. And I have seen that these do work with command strips. I just have to wait until tomorrow. So I'm sitting here on the floor of my bathroom to show you guys what the foam looks like after sitting for almost 48 hours now. As you can see, some of them expanded pretty well. Others on the other hand have not. Um, I would actually say that for the red panels themselves, this is the best versus the worst. So the problem is that how do I make this look like that? So both the manufacturer and tutorials online suggest soaking the foam in water after they've set for the initial 24 hours in the open air. And I actually did do that with one piece of foam that isn't quite as bad as this one. So this one actually did a pretty decent job of expanding when it was soaked in water. It's still not quite 100% though. Like you can see on the end there and on the end here, uh, it's still compressed a little bit. But I did find one other tutorial online, and this one is actually fairly new to me. I've never seen this before. But rather than using the soaking in water method, they actually recommend using a hairdryer. And I've even seen a bunch of people in the comments that said that this saved them anywhere between 24 to 72 hours worth of waiting. I wish I had seen that video first, but I don't want to get ahead of myself because I got to try this out for myself first. All right, so this will hopefully prove to be a little interesting experiment. What I did is the panel that was already wet and damp from the night before, I re-wet in the kitchen sink and really got it saturated before I rang it out. The other one is still completely dry, and the dry one is the one that I deemed to be the worst out of all 48 that I had received. So, if the video holds true that it needs to be heated, but maybe it needs to be dampened first. But what I'm doing instead of using a hair dryer is I'm taking it a little bit more extreme. I'm gonna put it in the clothes dryer, but I'm not doing it for very long and I'm not doing it very hot either, uh, because obviously a clothes dryer is gonna go much hotter than a hair dryer would. So I'm doing it for about five minutes on the lowest heat setting. So five minutes, low heat, let's see if any change comes about. And there you have it. 20 minutes in the dryer for all of them, low heat, and they've all fully expanded. I am actually very pleased with the way this turned out. Olive is in here helping as well. Um, but these might actually even be taller than the black ones that didn't need to be washed and dried. Let's check it out. So if you needed any other proof, this is it right here. Obviously this is not a flat surface because it is on the end of a bed, but these red panels on the right versus the black panels on the left um, there's actually almost about a full inch difference in height, and they are the same number of panels as well. So clearly, the water and dryer trick does work. But right now for me, it's more so a matter of getting the booth done and getting it up and running completely so I can start cracking away at these auditions I have lined up. And here is Olive now to help me showcase the foam. Thank you very much, Olive. You cannot have those. But thank you for helping everyone else understand that the red pile is clearly the better pile, because that's the one that you like. You're a good girl. You're a very good girl. Yeah. You want to say hi to everyone? Say hi. Don't eat my pillow. Hey. Good girl. Oh, she's so dramatic. Stop eating my pillow. I know you're sorry. You're a good girl. So now that all the foam panels have expanded, there's only one more test to do. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for.
So now with the foam panels expanded and all hung up by the command strips, the only thing left to do was the cable management itself. So I put the bracket back on the door frame and started to put the cords underneath in the channel that I had cut out and held them in place with zip ties. Unfortunately, it became apparent very quickly that this solution was not going to work. All right, let's give it a test run. Door's about to close. It's probably gonna hit, yep. What if I did this? Step down on the cover first. Get the cords lower. Nope. <sighs> Damn it. Nope, it doesn't work. That really stinks. I know this was an intricate solution and it wasn't done perfectly from the get-go, but even now just seeing it in action and actually testing it out against the carpet, uh, I don't think it's feasible. It's just not gonna do enough of what I need. So back to the drawing board. What I did for a new design was to actually take the same concept from the original bracket and also utilize the concept that I had come up with for trying to create smaller brackets to keep the cords all in a straight line. And I figured, why not combine the two ideas together and streamline it a little bit? So what I did is I made some very simple covers that would keep all five cords in a straight line, not allowing them to get tangled while also maintaining as flat and low as a surface as humanly possible. The other thing that I did for this one as well is I made sure to design it in a way that it wouldn't be tied down, which I know seems a little counterintuitive. But what I realized when I was trying to attach the first bracket was that the tighter that it was and the less give for movement that it had, the more difficult it was to actually make everything do what I wanted. By having a more restricted setup, I was restricting myself in what I was flexible to do. So instead, this version is just going to use two sides of plastic that will be put together on either side of the cords to hold them in line and everything will be held together with zip ties. The nice thing about this design is that it doesn't even necessarily need zip ties to be held together. You could actually hold this together with something like painter's tape. So the fact that this was printed in blue PLA is really nice because that means that blue masking tape or blue painter's tape will blend in nicely and it won't be an eyesore. But by having the cords set up this way, they're able to move underneath the door freely, which was nice because something I realized was that the rug was a bit more matted down in the middle, the common area where people would walk through, whereas it was a bit more raised on the sides closest to the frame. So by having a design like this instead, this will actually work to my benefit. And look how much better that is. This fits exactly the way I needed it to. It's keeping all five of the cords exactly flat and the zip ties are just enough to hold everything in place without adding too much height to everything. So let's do a test run like before. So it'll still meet there when the door goes to close, but the nice part, again, because this is now free floating and there it is. So all the foam, is finally up, cable management is finally done. I think you guys know what time it is. Let's finally do the sound treated test run and we'll compare the two. In examining a book such as Peter Rabbit, it is important that the superficial characteristics of its deceptively simple plot should not be allowed to blind the reader to the more substantial fabric of its deeper motivations. In this report, I plan to discuss the sociological implications of family pressures so great as to drive an otherwise moral rabbit to perform acts of thievery which he consciously knew were against the law. And for the record, all of that was recorded without any post-processing done whatsoever. No sound removal, no click removal, no audio enhancement, nothing. That is just the raw sound of what the recordings sound like coming out of the vocal booth itself. And guys, it's finally done. I had originally predicted that this would probably take the better part of a week, and frankly, I was right. But keep in mind a couple things that actually pushed it out that far. The first is that on each given day where I did do work, and by the way, I did have two days off. It was the weekend, I was waiting for the acoustic panels to show up from Amazon the second time around, and I also had to wait for them to finish expanding. So there were two days in between the, the one week where I didn't do any work at all. But the other part of it as well is that every day where I did do work, it was anywhere between two hours at the least to four, maybe five at the absolute most. 
I also feel like I made a lot more work for myself designing it the way that I did. I think it would have been a lot faster and potentially easier if I had just done acoustic paneling all the way around. But like I had mentioned before, I had these old materials from the pop-up booth that I had created from the PVC pipe and moving blankets, and I didn't want them to go to waste. They would have just stayed in storage or in a corner somewhere or I may have ended up having to get rid of them, but at least this way, I haven't wasted any materials. My estimation also was precise. I have exactly one dozen panels left. I'm debating putting them on the outside of the door, but the problem is that the door sits inside of the frame when you're looking at it from the outside. So on the inside, it's exactly two feet, which are perfect for the panels. On the outside, it's a little bit less than that, so I don't want to have to futz around with it too much. Maybe I'll do something where it's almost like diamonds and kind of creating like a fancy fun pattern on the outside, but I could also just go ahead and hang one of my swords on the wall. Who has a vocal booth that has a sword hanging up on the door? Nobody that I know. I could be the first one. Who knows? I'll have a little bit of fun with it, maybe. I understand that this is a very long video and I do apologize for that. Hopefully you guys stuck with it through the whole thing, but if not, hopefully those time indexes at the bottom will help you go through and see the stuff that you're looking for in particular that will help you with your build. To that end, if you guys have any questions, anything about the materials that I found and used, where I got them from, how much I spent on them, uh, what little tips and tricks I did that maybe I didn't include in the video, because remember, I've been doing this now for the better part of a week. Not even including the video that I'm recording right now, which is also gonna be the video at the beginning of all of this. The folder that has all of the material that was recorded is up over 32, just shy of 33 gigabytes. So this is probably gonna push to about 34, 35-ish. So I condensed down anywhere between 15 to what? 25 hours worth of work down to a 40 to 45 minute video. I'm pretty happy with that and I did cut a lot out. But again, hopefully this video helps you guys out. If it doesn't, I'm sorry to hear that. But if it does, that's great. But now, having said all that, I need to go take a shower. I am tired. I'm hot. I'm sweaty. <sighs> Thanks, guys.